Hey guys and welcome to the part 2 of our sh uh, Corona high switch tutorial. Uh, in this part we will take a look at how to utilize Corona's race switchers uh, to optimize performance of your scene. So I've got this our good old uh, Corona interior scene. Uh, exterior is lit by some dusk environment map and interior has, ju interior has just one IES profile right here in a lamp. So if I just render the scene as it is, you can see how it looks and uh, what you can immediately notice is that uh, the light source here is causing some nasty, like almost firefly-like noise. And uh, what this is caused by is basically uh, the light source, our IS profile is really close to some surface and uh, as it is close uh, it uh, really strongly illuminates uh, the lampshade which then itself works as an emitter it's picked up by GI and uh, since it's just GI sampling regular it's not actual light uh, like corona light source uh, then the sampling of this light source is not optimal therefore we get this noise so if you ever had encountered this in some of your scene and wanted to get rid of it without uh, decreasing quality of your scene lighting too much you can actually do this uh, using ray switchers so what I can do is I can take the material of the lampshade and I can just get corona ray switch material and I can plug this material into everything except the global illumination and in the global illumination I would just simply put completely black material if we, if we left, left uh, global illumination empty uh, the lampshade would then not cast any shadows and it would look weird and really unrealistic so I'm gonna go to render settings I'm gonna show our frame buffer then I'm gonna go here uh, rendering uh, compare media in RAM player. I'm gonna load this as a channel A. Let's take a look. 27 passes. All right. So let's set limit to 27 passes. So we have some nice space for comparison. And uh, now let's assign. Let's assign this uh, ray switcher to everything in our lampshade. All right. Oops, and I, I moved my view, so let's try to at least roughly match it back. So yeah, I think that looks kind of close. All right, let's go with this. And let's render again. And you can immediately see that this noise we had all around here around this uh, around this uh, area surrounding the light source is gone there's still a little bit of noise here and i'll show you in a minute how to get rid of this one but the main lane lampshade no the noise is now gone so let's let's just wait for 27 passes and let's then compare the noise amount to what we had before all right 27 passes is done so let's just get back to our RAM player, open the other render, and as you can see, obviously it doesn't it doesn't perfectly match because I moved my camera, but you can clearly see, especially here, if I manage to zoom it somehow, it seems like I cannot zoom it here, but hopefully you can see that all the noise that was previously there is gone, and the quality of the scene of the scene lighting hasn't changed that much. Uh, okay, so uh, this remaining noise, if I if I start the render again, uh, you probably saw there's uh, there's another little bit of noise on the ceiling as well as here under this shelving, and what this is caused is by the floor. As the floor, I made it intentionally a bit reflective. So if I open my my material editor. 
Uh, this is the floor. It's actually quite shiny, a little shiny, shinier than uh, any floor would usually be. But uh, for the demonstration purposes, it's okay. And basically, mm, the less diffuse and more glossy the surface is, uh, the sharper caustics it produces and the uh, sharper the caustics are the harder to render they are. Uh, most of the uh, noise that would be caused uh, by these caustics is clamped by max sample intensity parameter here. So if you encounter such a noise it's sometimes good idea to decrease this uh, parameter. But uh, in this case, uh, what we can do is use ray switcher, which is uh, again here. So I'm just going to duplicate it, delete all these connections, and I can just plug again the floor here. Now what I will do is that, that I uh, duplicate the material and I do not want to lose too much of the light energy bouncing from the floor to the ceiling. If I put just black material there, uh, it will look as, a, as if uh, no light has bounced from the floor and the scene realism would really suffer. Instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable reflection, keep the diffuse, but I'm gonna increase the diffuse to compensate for the loss of energy uh, that, has, that has happened due to us uh, disabling the reflection. So uh, we will have more we will have uh, basically similar amount of the light bouncing from the floor, but it will be scattered uh, diffusely, not in a more sharp direction, creating sharp caustics. And I'm going to just plug this in. And again, if I go approximately to our camera view here. Actually, I'm going to just, yeah. <laughs> I could also first assign this ray switch material where it belongs on the floor. There we go. I'm going to point the camera more towards the ceiling. And as you can see, right now if I render the scene, there's the usual soft noise you would expect to see when, when you start rendering the scene but there are no like fireflies or like the strong noise that uh, already you can tell would take quite a while to converge. So uh, this is how you can utilize uh, Corona's ray switcher to optimize uh, some, of par some selectively optimized parts of your scene to converge faster. Another thing you can do is, let's say, uh, let's actually disable this light. Let's unhide our curtains and uh, let's boost our exposure slightly, uh, which is here, and render a test render. Sometimes you may have a scene where most of the windows or maybe all of the windows are covered by some curtains. And uh, curtains materials are usually quite complex. For example, this one. Uh, I've got here is uh, uh, is a material that has translucency which is uh, diffuse scattering on the other side and it has also some really really fine texture in the opacity slot as well as the translucency slot and if rays go through this complex uh, complex curtain materials mapped with the so fine texture some of the rays will go uh, straight through. Some of them will bounce in a random direction. Some of them will be uh, completely blocked, etc. <coughs> That's gonna create a really, really la uh, large amount of noise. So if I now render, uh, you can see there is significant amount of noise around uh, the curtains where the light enters. Uh, so. Basically, if you if you would let it converge a bit more, uh, you would end up with just uh, some soft shadows. You wouldn't really see individual shadows of these small like holes in the fabric, lights coming through. So we can actually simplify this material for the path tracing using ray switcher, which is again really simple. 
I'll take ray switcher. I'll put it again in all the appropriate overrides. And for the global illumination, I will just take material, which will have approximate color of the curtain and the approximate opacity of the curtain. So let's say the curtain is 80%, approximately 80% opaque. So opaque. So I will set it to oh, oh, opa set opacity to uh, 0.8. And I'm going to plug this to the global illumination slot. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to assign the ray switcher material here. And again, if I render, we will see that our curtains look exactly the same way as before. But uh, there is a bit less noise around, uh, around the curtains. You can always render yourself first uh, some reference of how, how much shadows, how much shadow uh, the, those curtains cast and uh, then try to uh, match the reference, the amount of shadowing uh, with a simplified material in the global dimension slot. And uh, if you spend a few minutes tweaking it, you may eventually get to result that is uh, pretty much the same. But of course your scene will render a bit faster. Actually, <clears throat> You know, uh, the opacity is 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 just really fast, uh, fast way for ray, rays to go through. Uh, if you if you are using, for example, thin walled refraction, like here, you can you see it's just uh, this actually thin walled glass is actually nothing more than opacity. If I create a completely mirror material like this and then use fall of map set to Fresnel which matches the IOR of this material and I put this to the opacity slot then you can see I've created the exact same thing I've created basically a thin walled glass so if you're usually using a thin walled glass in your windows then uh, using this trick with uh, the opacity uh, for the global illumination for your curtains, uh, those curtains will not slow uh, your rendering down more than usual thin walled glass in the windows. And last thing I'm gonna show you is from my personal project. So let me just navigate in there. And it's. Um, Here you go, it's actually a GDI power plant uh, from Command and Conqueror series. And let me just do a quick render. You can see this is how it looks. And I've created some really simplified interior. So there's some like parallax going on when I am animating the camera around. So let's just increase the self illumination here to like 10. If I render this now, you can see I have some light, like light panels around, but you can see also it's very noisy. Again, if you render, if you are sampling just self illuminated material with global illumination, the sampling is not optimal. It's going to be very noisy. So again, what you can do here is use Corona ray switch map and uh, put the self illumination map into reflection, refraction and direct and uh, leave global illumination to black and put it back. So if I want strong light sources, I can still have them, but uh, I can have them without uh, without the noise that's caused by GI sampling. Of course, you, you won't then get any illumination from the self illuminated surfaces, but Often this is desired, you just want some light uh, glowing detail, but you don't want it to be picked up by GI because uh, it really slows down your rendering. All right, so I think this is it for the 
uh, for the race switch tutorial. I really hope you found it useful and I'll see you